Good day to viewers and we're looking at the Bitfinex one hour chart where I've redrawn the rising channel. Other US dollar charts and yuan charts are better defined in terms of this lower channel trend line. Uh, for example, the Bitstub chart, the OKCoin OK US dollar chart and the futures charts. It's worth noting that price is still pushing up against this upper trend line as the US dollar charts Bitfinex BTCE and Bitstamp reach for 2400 at the time of this recording. The futures charts in OKCoin are pushing for 2500 while Chinese Yuan is reaching for 16,000. These are incredible levels and they happen to all be round numbers. In a minute I will show a chart showing the convergence of price across exchanges uh, during the past week. The same advice applies as yesterday. Price is advancing. RSI is diverging from this move both in terms of this high up here and across and this very last push higher that is occurring at the moment. So the current juncture of price is very tough. It seems like it should sell off and return to the lower trend line below which lies the 200 period moving average of the one hour chart and these are potential support levels should things turn down. However, as I pointed out yesterday, it is very likely that price pushes above this channel and then starts advancing in an even steeper channel, perhaps defined by what we see here, this rising uh, channel that might develop up like this as price continues on its parabolic path. In this chart, we see how the exchanges price vary and especially during the past two months as price had been pushing higher the charts featured here are Bitstamp, Bitfinex, OKCoin, OK US Dollar Spot, BTCE and BTC China. It is obvious that it is usually either way above price or lags below, just slightly below. Here we saw a significant divergence between the Chinese Yuan prices and US dollar prices. Now most of the catch-up happened during the past week as different exchange prices approach $2,000. This is a linear scale view and the parabolic path of price is obvious. The main topic of discussion in social media today has been the Barry Silver Accord uh, published by the Digital Currency Group and the upcoming user activated software with a lot of users now asking questions about what it is, what the dangers are and what is involved. Let's take a quick look at the details of a user activated software. The first thing to understand is that the user activated software is not a vote. The planned UASF requires SegWit capable full nodes to enforce BIP 148 on the 1st of August 2017 which in turn should twist miners arms to start signaling SegWit for activation. The original roadmap for SegWit activation relied on almost unanimous signaling by miners. However, since more powerful miners are not signaling, presumably to prolong the current high fee profits, there is a deadlock and SegWit stands no chance of being activated in the present situation. A user activated soft fork requires that full node operators add code to their nodes that enforces a workaround to minor signaling. The workaround is called BIP 148. The hoped for outcome of the user activated soft fork offensive is that miners act rationally and quote jump ship unquote and start signaling for SegWit activation with every new block that they mine on the SegWit only chain that will hopefully be created by the soft fork on the 1st of August. Now, the hopefully there is the operative term because if there is not an economic majority of full nodes that enforce BIP 148, then the user activated soft fork can result in a very messy chain split. The user activated soft fork on 1 August seems as maybe 
at the moment because participation is still low and UASF is not the only way forward. It can be argued that once the rally blows off, as all rallies do, that fee rates will decline along with price and that miners will no longer have an incentive to block SegWit. The original SegWit roadmap will then make sense and unfold as planned. Whichever way SegWit signaling manifests, according to the timelines and conditions that are baked into the core client code, its actual activation and implementation is still at least a year away. Now regarding the Barry Silbert Accord with leading Bitcoin companies and miners, it is important to note that one of the most prominent Bitcoin companies, namely Blockstream, were not invited to participate. Eventually they were invited, but then the invitation was revoked at the last minute. This has led users with some confusion as to what exactly was happening at the, uh, uh, at the compromise meeting organized by Barry Silbert and the general sense amongst users and developers is that the compromise between business entities is flawed because it revises SegWit technical requirements, allows continued use of the controversial and patented ASIC boost, and that its time frames are unrealistic according to many experts and developers. As a result of this mishmash of stipulations and proposals and a mixing and matching, the Barry Silbert Accord has become known as Franken Segwit. And one commentator remarked, I wouldn't be surprised if Franken Segwit becomes a large motivator for more people to adopt the user-activated software.